In case you missed it, last week, Kali Linux celebrated its 10th anniversary, and to celebrate, they released Kali Linux 2023.1 and a whole new flavor of distribution, Kali Linux Purple, all about purple teaming and defense, and not just red teaming or offensive security, but also mixing in a little bit of that blue team flair to create purple. In this video, we're going to dive in. This is the blog post that they released online on Monday, 13th of March for the Kali Linux 2023.1 release and Kali Purple and a couple of things to note regarding Python. Now, they're super stoked about this, I'm super stoked about this, and it's awesome. Tons and tons of cool stuff, but most importantly, Kali Linux Purple. It's all about defense. It's not just offensive security anymore. While it comes from offensive security, hey, they're getting into a little bit of that proactive defense, protection, and greater security. Security. What they want to bring to the table here is a sock in a box or a security operation center all in one great machine and they have some incredible super cool new defensive tools. They have over a hundred here but they list a couple of the super cool ones. Archive for full packet capture, Cyberchef, meh, Elastic, that's pretty cool, the Hive, GVM, Malcolm, Suricata, Zeke. They do of course include some documentation and some other super cool stuff that I'm interested in. Kali Autopilot, an attack script builder or framework for automating attacks, and Kali Purple hub for the community to share practice PCAPs or packet captures, things that you might be able to learn from for blue teaming exercises, and a ton of sweet stuff. Anyway, enough talk, let's just go ahead and go download this thing. Here's that download link. Now normally when you download Kali Linux, you can choose between just a flat ISO file, an installer image, or some pre-built virtual machines. Things that you could fire up in VirtualBox, VMware, or even Docker containers and stuff you could roll into like WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux. Whole lot of these, but I do have to note for Kali Purple, it's a little bit different. You are only given the ISO file that you have to build, create, and bake into your own virtual machine manually. You don't have a pre-built VM image, the VMDK, VMX, and everything. You have to set up the ISO file on your own, but we can go ahead and click on download and start to pull this thing down and do it. About three and a half gigs, pulling it down. Hey, got it five seconds left. All right, look at that gigabit. All right, right, I'm inside a <laughs> VMware workstation and I'm just kind of going to speed run this VM creation process because, hey, honestly, no one really cares. We've all done this before. I'll click on my Kali Linux installer purple and then we can go ahead and say, yeah, sure, that's Linux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll turn this baby on. That was weird. I didn't like saying that. Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. Yep, yep, yep. American English, that's for me. I'm the United States fool. Okay, now we get to choose the desktop environment and all the tools that we might like. However, these are all broken down into the NIST cybersecurity framework, which is super duper cool. Let's go ahead and hit continue. Okay, finishing up the installation. That actually took a little bit of time to pull down all those tools and, and get them set up. Okay, time to reboot. Let's do it. <gasps> Kali Linux. That is a flashy new boot screen, I will say. That looks pretty slick. All right, let's log in. Kali Kali. Oh, it looks so cool. Kali Purple. <laughs> Okay, I amped up the screen size so it's a little bit easier to see for you mobile-friendly folks. Uh, and take a look. The, one of the very first things to note is that the kernel version is the new and updated 6.1.0. So that's pretty awesome. Hey, working with the latest and greatest kernel versions here. And actually, before I dive into anything, I do want to create a snapshot now that that has been fully created here. Take snapshot, fresh install. Alongside the kernel update, they have, of course, updated the desktop environment. Uh, whatever you're using, whether it's XFCE, KDE, or GNOME, looks like they have bumped those up to the latest versions, XFCE, which is I'm using as the default right now, brought out to version 4.18, released close by Christmas at the very end of last year. Looking good, looking snazzy, all the new updates and a little bit more properties with panels and other things you might be able to do. KDE, of course, bumped up, new tiling support, GNOME, always super cool. There are some new, hey, cheesy background or wallpaper papers if you're interested in that. Personally, I'm really digging just the purple theme. Control Alt T will of course still be the hotkey to open up the terminal. I've gone ahead and changed the terminal theme to Kali Dark because my goodness that looks a lot better and is easier on the eyes than Kali Light. And of course the super key will still bring up the context menu for anything that you want to do. But take a look at the super cool new additions. It's the new five sub menus here for identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. Now if you aren't familiar, those are the five pillars and foundations and fundamentals for the NIST cybersecurity framework. I, for one, absolutely love that they incorporated that. I think it's nice. Scrolling through here, you have a mass, Asset Finder, ooh, some Defect Dojo, HP Honeypot, uh, Maltigo, which is always awesome. Hey, some usual Red Team, Pen Tester stuff, Surge Sploit, ooh, even Spiderfoot, Zap, of course. On the Protect section, you looks like you have a minimal antivirus Clam AV, Firewall Builder, Detector, some odd ones. I don't know these, truthfully. 
respond. Ooh, of course we've got Foremost. Of course we've got Ghidra. Impact it. Ooh, even Ollie Debug. That's super cool. I didn't know you could run that on Linux. RK Hunter, Rookit Hunter, Yara. That was going to be my first thing. I was going to fire up the terminal. I was going to type in Yara. And if they didn't have Yara, I was going to be upset. Do they have Sigma? They don't have Sigma. Okay, can't have all the wins. What about Chainsaw? Nope, don't have Chainsaw. Hey, one thing to note here, the convenience of Kali Linux being a Linux distribution offered for penetration testers, ethical hackers, cybersecurity researchers, practitioners, anyone. Look, you can, it, it, it's still Linux. You can install whatever tools you want. You can configure it to do whatever you want. But having it all kind of built and bundled up into what you want right out of the gate from the ISO or the VM file, that is awesome and that is a nicety. And I honestly love the fact, look, look still pull down Sigma, still pull down Chainsaw, cut through Windows event logs, but having a lot of these tools already baked in and put together is just such a convenience. So what else do we have here scrolling down in this menu here? The reverse engineering section is awesome. They actually have APK tool. I saw them install Jadix or like the Java decompiler, something for APK files on Android. Of course, you have Cutter, the graphical user interface for Radar A2 or Radar 2, however you want to say that. And there's, of course, there it is right there, the command line. The forensic section is awesome because, oh, they have so much stuff. Your Red Ripper, that's pretty great to see. Foremost, of course, for cutting up files, recovering JPEG images, scalpel. PDF forensics, PDF parser, sleuth kit, and autopsy. So nice. Where is my elastic? Where is Archimy? What? Where is Archimy? How do I run that? <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm going back to their documentation here. Uh, cause I feel like I'm not seeing the things that it was coming with, right? Am I, am I dumb? Oh, so no, wait a second. You gotta have Malcolm and Hedgehog. These other things, right? Kali Hedgehog, I download that. Save. And Malcolm, download that. Safe. So this is what it looks like running Elastic, but how do I get that? How do I set that up? Archimy, Malcolm, Hedgehog. These are all nice screenshots, but how do I do it? Kelly Autopilot? I don't see that in there. Autopilot. It's not there. Oh, wait a second. Goodness. So I have to build out this whole architecture thing? Overview. Talk in a box. Overview. It's the exact same thing. You brought me to the same page. Wait, wait, wait. Installation. Use the links in the sidebar to navigate through the installation docs. Usage. Just a bunch of screenshots. Roadmap, create the Kali Purple installer, include the Elastic Sack sources, package these things up. It doesn't have the Hive yet, that is not checked. Is anyone else seeing this? Are these are there issues for this? Kali Autopilot can't be installed. It's not in the repositories, can't be installed like it said with documentation with sudo apt install Kali Autopilot. Can I do that? Sudo apt install Kali Autopilot. Nah, uh, no. What about update? Still can't. Sudo git clone from Kali Autopilot. Oh, wait, what? What the heck? Latest version of Kali Linux. This is from a day ago from recording. I'm so confused. <laughs> is it, was it not set? So it's not, it's not included. It's not in the thing. Yeah, still digging into this. Uh, 10 hours ago, eight hours ago. Oh, they got it. Okay, so it's not included. You still need to install it with Git. Installation instructions are not clear. <laughs> Installation instructions on the wiki are not clear. Do you start at 100 and work your way down? Hello, yes, you start with 100 and work your way down the install, but you don't need to go through each one since each one is its own instance. What? You'll set up your VLANs and then deploy the instances. I suggest look at the network diagram. Just, uh, am I not tracking? Curl not installed in Kali Purple. Wait a second, what? It's not? It's just literally not? <laughs> okay, so if we need to go down the things in the sidebar, we apparently need Kali Violet. Installation. Kali Purple installation medium. That's just taking me back to the regular Kali download, so that's not... Okay, so you need OpenSense and they give you a download here. I'm assuming that probably would have been helpful in 100 if you knew you were using that beforehand. Installation. Just a bunch of pictures of Proxmox. That's not extremely helpful. The Elastic Agent. Note, the Kelly Purple Elastic server must be operational at this stage. How do we set it up? Where would it go? Recover. Wait, that section just has nothing. There's nothing in the recover section. <laughs> Oh, 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 wait a second. The Elastic Stack is in section 300 that you need to have set up and installed before you do the 200 Elastic Agent and then the 400 uh, Elastic Agent and Elastic Agent for those other boxes. This is confusing to me. Okay, okay, so this is all supposed to be part of this big, big architecture where you get to do all of this stuff, virtualization, firewalls, VLAN, WAF, SIEM, IDS, IPS, with this giant architecture, which is this thing. And this is more than I realized I was uh, bargaining for when I wanted to start recording this video. So I don't think I'm gonna do this all right now. <laughs> Especially with some of the uh, description and instructions here to use the links on the sidebar uh, to the installation just points you to exactly what we've already installed and then just a bunch of screenshots of this. So I don't, maybe I'm wrong. 
And I have tried to download a uh, hedgehog and Malcolm repeatedly. I do keep getting a network error and I'm not quite sure why. Um, so anyway, I guess maybe all this could be a little bit cleaned up. <laughs> Maybe that's on my side. If I may, it seems like there are a couple speed bumps, a couple kinks left to work out uh, and figuring out how they wanted to build out and actually make the documentation getting started guide or the quick start for that Cali purple sock in a box. Otherwise, still really, really cool to have some more defensive tools inside of a dedicated Cali Linux distribution, but might be some more on the roadmap and horizon. So I think I'm going to pivot. I'm going to go to the Kali Linux 2023.1, the genuine, real, uh, normal, so to speak, Kali Linux distribution here. Let's jump into regular Kali here. Now I have installed this previously and I've been playing with it for a little bit. I have Terminator set up and everything set up in the way that I like it for the terminal. Uh, and I do want to drive the point home that we are now using Python 3.11. Now that has its own hiccups here because 3.11 and all of the Debian updates that we're working with uh, uh, changes a couple things for installation. And I mean installation in installing packages, like grabbing new libraries, grabbing new modules, or things that you might want to use to enhance or extend your Python code, right? Stuff that you normally install via pip. Some of those changes and hiccups are really ultimately due to packages being updated, right? Uh, some of the older packages that have not yet been able to be transitioned to this new setup, hey, Python 3.11 and all the changes in Debian, which Kali is based off of. Not everything is working all that well uh, when you normally were, or at least if you regularly use uh, pip and python incorrectly so to speak right if you try to install tac tac user or pseudo pip install if these sort of clash depending on how you install packages then it doesn't work all that well for you depending on what you end up pulling in and using for some programs and applications that are underlying Python packages. The way they suggest fixing stuff up is actually trying to install packages via apt, which is kind of weird. You do a Python 3 hyphen and then the name of the module that you actually want, or searching for the actual library or name of that package to install it within apt right away, or using a virtual environment, which is probably best practice all the time anyway. You want a source to go ahead and invoke and activate that virtual environment, or just do weird stuff. If you don't want to do any of that and you just want to break stuff, you can literally run tac tac break system packages and then that, you know, does horrible things. Hey, at the end of the day, look, a whole lot of stuff, a lot of changes, maybe some stuff breaking in those changes, but the question is, should you update? Yes, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I think it's kind of really nice to get the new kernel version, to get the new updates to the desktop environment, to get some of the new tools that they have pulling in, and to make the change to Python 3.11. That is an inherently good thing. If you can get yourself used to some of those Python virtual environment changes or installing via app, that can be pretty handy if you want to be, I don't know, getting used to some of the new tools and that new workflow. Kali Purple, Kali Purple, awesome thing, awesome idea. It's weird to see some of the uh, growing pains with that, especially in some of the documentation in the wiki here. Wasn't everything that I thought it was kind of as I parred the thing open, but I think that will come with time. Is it gonna be something that I use personally? Like, yeah. A thousand percent. Like, I personally think that, look, I'll put this up with Remnux, Flare, Commando, whatever Windows things that I might be doing for other research, for other random blue team stuff alongside the red team and making it purple team as we sort of blend these two colors together. And that's where a whole lot of the fun comes in. So look, if you haven't played with Kali Linux Purple yet, if you haven't downloaded it, if you haven't gotten the new latest and greatest 2023.1, you should do it. You should try it out. Kick the tires and maybe transition some of your toolkit, some of your arsenal, some of everything that you do in the new updated rendition. Hope that was kind of fun to explore and run into the same walls that I ran into. I'm curious what you think. If you are already prying together, pulling this stuff up for Kali Linux Sock in a Box, please let me know in the comments. And uh, with that, hey, YouTube outro. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video.